Good morning, what's going on everyone? I am Adam Green from Green Auto Services and today we have a 2008 Volvo XC90. Specifically with an automatic transmission and even more specifically it has a foot pedal for a rear handbrake. Now why is this important? Now I MOT'd the vehicle tail end of last year and there were a few advisories in regards to the rear braking system. Now that I do know from experience there is a super common fault with these XC90 braking systems. Um, there are certain components which seize and then you go to use the handbrake and it stays on although you've released it and you get squealing and binding and you can smell burning and it just creates a whole world of chaos but anyway this is what I'm here for so we are going to get the vehicle onto the ramp we're going to get it up in the air we're going to get the brakes stripped down now if you like what you see or you've learned something please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and drop us a like so without further ado let's get straight into it Okay, so this is the uh, passenger front footwell. Um, now, to gain access to the handbrake adjuster, uh, we need to remove this panel here. I've already removed it. Um, it literally just pops uh, out from the front and then it's just held in with a few retaining sprung-loaded clips. So you can just take that off and put that aside. If you want to just pull back the carpet lining, you've got this metal cylinder just down there. Now, let's pop the light pretty difficult to do with just two hands so this down here is the adjuster for the handbrake now what I have already gone and done as well is actually removed this tiny little C clip now what that clip does that stops the handbrake from de-adjusting itself and I'll show you where I got that from sits in a groove just in there I'm really sorry you can't quite see it because I've got the chair in the way um, but literally where my finger is there is a recess or a groove that, that c-clip will sit into so what we're going to do from here this main part of the body we are going to rotate towards us and it's going to unscrew it that way and because the c-clip has been removed we can, that's actually now allowing it to unscrew that way and then if we keep unscrewing it that way all of a sudden this cable will then release and that will allow the handbrakes to fully release and then we can get the rear pads and discs off. Alrighty so we have now taken the caliper off, the pads out, the pad carrier off and the disc has come off. Now I have already gone ahead and taken all the uh, handbrake shoes out. Um, the reason being, I want to kind of show you, uh, before we put it back together uh, with all new bits and bobs, how exactly specifically these handbrake shoes are held in place because it's a little bit tricky to uh, get off. So in the center here, you have got a hole. Now that goes through both the top and the bottom uh, shoes and that is held in place. Now this is a new one, a new retaining spring. There we go, so as you can see, it's kind of got a hook on one end and flat on the other. It's always good to make a note of the orientation of where the hook is in correspondent to the front of the spring. The reason being is that when it comes to uh, putting it back in, you are gonna be doing it a little bit blind. Um, so you're gonna have to feel your way around knowing where the orientation is. So anyway, uh, the way this spring goes in and goes out, that hook at the end there, is designed to go into that hole in the backing plate just there. So effectively, imagine you're putting this spring through the shoe and then through that hole there, and then you're literally gonna move it across and to the right so it hooks behind it. And effectively, that is what is gonna hold the handbrake shoes in place. So if you can understand how that works, fitting it and removal of these little springs is going to be a lot easier. Okay then, so what I've already done, I've already stripped down um, the, the caliper, the pads and the discs. So inside the rear brake discs, um, of course, you've got your handbrake system. So these are your handbrake shoes, one at the top, one at the bottom. These are the retaining springs, uh, a mount there, which just goes in between that end and that end of the shoes. This, however, right here, this is the crux of our problem. Now, this is the super common problem on all of these XC90s with a manual foot pedal for a handbrake. Um, now, this part does actually sit between the shoes just about there. So if you can imagine, everything is all together. And what happens is the handbrake cable is attached just on the end there. 
and imagine that's in the vehicle, the handbrake cable will pull the lever that way and it will effectively open up due to the shape and actually apply the shoes open like that inside the disc and lock it on. However, what happens is because particularly in all the automatics, um, people just put it in park, don't even put the foot brake on and this little pivot point here just seizes up. It corrodes, it seizes, it doesn't move. There's enough force if you were to use the foot brake to put it on and currently that is in the on position but when you release the foot brake you're relying on these retaining springs and the general restriction of the handbrake system to pull this back down. Now, I actually am just trying. See, that is completely solid. Now that should be free spinning. So from here onwards, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be putting this through the wire wheel just to clean off all the uh, corrosion. And then I'll be putting a load of WD-40 in there and slowly working this all loose. So I'm gonna do that now and then show you what it should be like once it's all done. Okay, and there we are. So as you can see, uh, this uh, handbrake lever uh, I've just cleaned up on the wire wheel just to get as much of the corrosion off the entire thing. Um, from there onwards, I literally just clamped it into a bench clamp and just grabbing the end of it just started to work that pivot point nice and free. Now there is a ton of, well there was, or there will be a ton of corrosion on that pin, um, but just with sheer brute force and a lot of maintenance spray or WD-40, that will start to work itself loose nice and easy and nice and free, just like that. And that is exactly what you want. So effectively, the handbrake pulls the shoe on and then when you release it, the natural resistance of the handbrake kit will pull that back to the off position. So now that that's done, for further maintenance to prolong uh, the life and of this pivot point and to stop it from seizing up again, I'm gonna be treating um, that in there in some copper slip to stop that from seizing up and of course I'll be telling the customer very nicely to try and get used to using the foot pedal and not relying on the parking brake given that it's an automatic to hold the vehicle. So there we go we are going to get everything back together but we will be renewing uh, the handbrake shoes the disc and the pads actually so the fitting kits um, the shoes will all be replaced um, however this uh, part here which holds one side of the shoes in the um, uh, back of the brakes, I'll be cleaning that up because this is not a renewable part in the fitting kit. So uh, that'll be cleaned up and put back in. So from there onwards, let's get it all back together and get it all adjusted up. So this is the new handbrake shoes and the fitting kit. Now what I've also gone and done is gone ahead and cleaned up that le lever and what I will be doing again is putting some copper slip uh, on the end of that pin to stop it from seizing up in the future. Um, it's always a good idea to take a photograph of everything before you take it apart. Like I said, there are um, a few springs that hold it all together. They do go in specific places and they're obviously different sizes, different tensions. So taking a photo before you take anything apart will always give you the original position to make putting things back in easier particularly if you are taking it all apart and renewing everything um, so that's the orientation I would recommend in this respect that you get the main retaining spring hooked in to the top and the bottom shoes and fit it with the lever first before you fit anything else because it is a bit fiddly it's a bit tight you're gonna have to really kind of pull some uh, uh, shoes about a bit and manipulate it in there but once it's in there fitting the rest of the locating pins and the other retaining spring is going to be really really easy so I'm gonna get it in the vehicle and then show you what I've done okay so that didn't actually take too long at all um, as I suggested before get the upper and the lower handbrake shoes in there with that retaining pin in there. That pin is, sorry, not the pin, the spring. It's very, very important. Make sure it's located at the top and the bottom and it sits behind the lever. Now, what I did in this respect, I actually put that lever in first. Then I just manipulated the shoes with the spring attached around it. Okay, so um, it does take a little bit of force, but uh, don't be shy to kind of give it a little bit of force because that spring can take quite a lot and as long as it's orientated correctly as you took it out, you won't have any problems. 
Okay, here we are. So these are the new shoes and the new fitting kit in place. So as I uh, recommended earlier, start with the lever first, followed by the upper and the lower handbrake shoes with the, um, the large spring attached. Then go ahead and put your bar in, which I have also cleaned up and uh, put some copper slip on all the contact points. Um, then I went ahead and put the retaining springs in. They popped in quite easily, because again, as long as you know how they go in, you can do it without necessarily looking. Um, and then lastly, do not forget to put that little spring in. That does play an important role, and it is there for a reason. Because it's small and everything's held together in place, it is very easy to forget. So from here onwards, we're now gonna get the, uh, the disc back on, um, the pads, carrier, caliper, um, of which is all new as well. Okay, and there we have it. So we've got the new disc on, we've got the new pads in there, um, and we've put it all together, and everything is now absolutely fine. So the next thing we're gonna do, we need now to adjust the handbrake itself. So we're gonna go back into the vehicle um, where we originally loosened off the adjuster, get that tightened up, and then adjust it up again. Okay, so at the moment, uh, the entire handbrake system is completely off, so, um, Pulling out the parking lever has released the actual pedal that is nice and loose. And because we've also loosened it off at the adjuster, the system is completely de-adjusted to its maximum. So before we adjust it over the adjuster, um, it's the first thing we need to do is actually push the pedal down by one or two clicks. Now normally you can just do one click so that effectively once it's all tightened up and you release it, you've got a little bit of play, but putting everything together was actually quite tight, slightly a bit tighter than expected. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more leeway because we can always adjust it up some more. I'm gonna give it two clicks. So just gently pushing down, there's one and two clicks. So leaving the pedal there, we're now gonna go over the other side and adjust everything up. Okay, so here we are on the passenger side, so the other side of the centre console. And if you remember from earlier, this is where we have the adjuster. Let me just grab the light so we can see a bit better. There we go. So just pulling that back up. So I haven't done anything with it yet. Uh, the cable is still nice and loose. Um, so what we need to do, we now need to wind the main body in the opposite direction. So away from us or anti-clockwise. So it comes back up the uh, thread so we can put in that circlip from earlier. Okay, so I hope you can just see, I hope that does focus in there. Um, now I've got this body and I've just wound it back by hand. It should be fairly loose and it has now exposed the original groove or cutout that that C-clip goes into. So that is the original C-clip that holds it all in place. And from memory, it's sat like that with the tab at the top facing towards the back of the vehicle. So we're gonna pop that in now, and then what we're gonna do is get the main body and wind it back towards us so it's up snug against that C-clip. Okay, so back to it again. Let me just grab a little bit of light, if you can see that. So the C-clip, if you can see, is now back in place, and then I've just wound the main body towards me again to send it towards the back of the car, but it will not go as far as that C-clip. So that C-clip stops it from going towards the back of the car and unthreading itself and therefore releasing the handbrake cable. So what we've got to do now is effectively just pull this part of the cable out towards the front of the vehicle, out from inside the main body. Now where the body is located at the moment, it's all locked off and will allow you to hear almost like a ratchet mechanism as you pull it out. Now this is incredibly stiff. You can pull it to get it started, Oh, see, there we go, so you can probably hear that. Now that's the ratchet mechanism locking and effectively adjusting the handbrake. But when it gets so far, it gets super, super stiff. So um, I use a couple of tools to kind of get in between both of those parts and actually lever the cable out of there. Okay guys, so off screen, I've actually been wrestling with this XC90 and adjusting up the handbrake cable. So to cut a long story short, um, when I was adjusting it, uh, the actual adjustment seemed really, really loose, almost like it's not even pulling on the cables. Um, I ended up removing the center console and actually looking at the equalizer, which effectively is what the one cable attaches to, then you've got an equalizer, which then attaches to the two individual rear cables. and 
it actually found that uh, it was completely off, wasn't even attached to the cables at all. Um, that is another underlying issue. Um, we have done the correct work at the rear because the, uh, the actual ha handbrake shoe levers were completely seized. I'm going to take you quickly into the vehicle and show you exactly what I found. Okay, so here we are back in the vehicle. Um, forgive the mess, but this is uh, effectively what you have to do just to get to the equaliser. So the uh, entire centre console has uh, come out. And if I take you in down here, you can see here we have got the equaliser. So you've got the one single cable, which is coming from the adjuster and therefore the um, uh, foot pedal in the driver's footwell. And it comes back to this metal bracket with a pivot point and the ears on either end there will actually attach to the handbrake cables which then go down through the chassis to the rear brakes and to the shoes um, and effectively that was just completely off both sides this was just flopping around not attached to anything so I've now reattached that and already readjusted it and everything seems absolutely fine so that is another fix we're going to get the vehicle all back together and back to the customer so this is a good opportunity to have a close look to actually see what has been going on. So these are effectively the rear brake pads and as you can see from how thin they are, they are practically worn out. They're about 90-95% worn but because there's a bit of a lip on the disc they were going to start hitting metal to metal fairly soon. So this is the actual brake disc. So as you can see we've got some fair amounts of corrosion and pitting and that's actually happening on both sides. The inside more than the outer but that's got quite a fair lip on it as well. More importantly though, so inside here, this is where the handbrake shoes actually sit and lock on the inside. Now, they were quite difficult to get off purely because there is such a big lip on there. I don't know if you can quite see that, but there is quite a hefty lip around that. And these are the handbrake shoes. So like I said, these actually sit inside the disc just like that. And once they're released, they let the disc go round. Once they are applied, they put force on the inside of this and stop it from rotating. And as you can see, if I just let you get it focused there, that is super, th that is practically worn out. So for this kind of job and the symptoms that we were getting, I would always recommend to get new discs, new pads, new shoes and a new fitting kit. And as long as you can assure that that lever is nice and free, it's cleaned and it's treated, then once everything goes back together, you will have no problems in the future. And there we have it everyone. That is how to strip down the rear brakes on a Volvo XC90 with a parking pedal for the handbrake. Now, if you've liked what you've watched in the video and you've learned something, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and drop us a like, because I can guarantee there's gonna be plenty more videos coming down the line for you to learn a lot, lot more. On that note, I am Adam from Green Auto Services and I will see you in the next video.